Welcome to the 2023 Lancaster Archery Classic from Spooky Nook Sports Complex here in Mannheim, Pennsylvania, as it is early morning shoot up finals time at the largest indoor archery tournament on the East Coast. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the broadcast booth. I'm Greg White, sitting alongside Eli Hughes, Gone. world record holder. Eli, it's been a very interesting weekend of qualification rounds, elimination rounds, and we had some great matches yesterday. What have you seen so far? Um, well, we watched the, the bear bow shoot up last night, which is always very exciting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So everybody, <laughs> bear bowers love bear bow. Yeah. But, um. On DAP today, though, we have like the top tier of archers coming at you because we have a good mix of Olympic compound, professional shooters, amateur shooters. And who knows, we have a couple classes where we're going to have eight trying to shoot up. But let's take a look at the schedule and what we have going on today. We're going to open up right now with Masters Open Pro. Then we're going to transition to bow hunter class. And we'll talk about those rules. And then women's recurve and Olympic recurve down to youth male. And then that men's open, that amateur category where we have eight trying to shoot for the top spot. Women's Open Pro. And we're going to finish things off with Open Pro. Another eight shooters in the elimination rounds. Now let's talk about the rules for this match that we have coming up, which is Masters Open Pro. We had 43 shooters competing and the top four have qualified. The ties were broken by the 11 ring. Now it's a bottom up format, so four is gonna shoot with three and whoever wins that match gets to shoot with the second place qualifier. Whoever wins that goes for that number one spot. Now what's unique about these finals is this 12 ring, a 1.5 centimeter white dot. So that means you can call it per end only once. You got to step on the button. You got to call it. Let the judges know you're going for that 12 because if you accidentally hit it and you didn't call it, you don't get the point value. That means there is a max point value of 136 points for each match. So that's all set. The rules are in place. Now let's throw it to the third member of our broadcast team who's going to welcome the archers to center stage. Good morning, PJ Riley. All right. Thanks, Greg. Let's get things started here with Masters Open Pro and bring out our first archer from Philomath, Oregon, Bill Drake. <laughs> Bill finished seventh in qualifications, but earned the fourth seed here. And now our number three seed from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Tim Audis. So we like to start with the Masters crowd on Sunday morning, because once you get over 50, these guys have been up for four hours anyway, so they might as well shoot. <laughs> Eli, you wouldn't know anything about that, but there is some truth to that. What, what PJ just said, uh, this Masters crowd, they definitely like to get up early and get things moving. And plus, you know what? This is generally 50 plus, and where we see most archers excel are somewhere closer to the age of 50, you know, 55, maybe under. And a lot of these archers still have jobs, so they like to get it over with early and get on their way home because yes. they got work, you know. All right, so tell us uh, what's the distance we're looking at from the archer to the target? So this is 20 yards, and. Uh, oh my gosh. Uh, target face is. This is a. 40 centimeter, 40 centimeter target, uh, size of the 10 ring. I believe it's two centimeters, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah the, it's basically the size of like a penny. Yes. 11. And Tim gets it. Tim. All right, so when we're looking at scoring, if you're new to archery, how do the points get scored? Like where does the arrow land and, and the point itself? Well, the X ring, 11. which is the one in the most center, that's an 11. And then it goes, it goes out from there, 10 ring, 9 ring. Yeah, when you shoot a three spot here, you go out to the six ring. Uh, sometimes today you'll see a single spot, and those go all the way out to basically one point. It goes out to one. So, of course, just on the other side is a practice area. Archers have been here for a little while warming up. And one of the things that we've seen is the difference between... It's going to be close. Yeah. All right, so when you say it's going to be close, what are you talking about? Well, most of these guys who are shooting uh, compound, adult men, full, yeah. full draw length, a lot of them are shooting 27, uh, 27 size arrows. Mm -hmm. And what that means is it can be, 
it can be just outside of the ten ring, that the edge of one of one side of the arrow. Okay, yeah, yeah. So the outside edge of the arrow can actually cut the line. Just a little bit. Yeah. And it can still cut the okay. eleven line at the yeah, same yeah, time. Yeah. yeah. And that is always a debate. It's always a debate when we're in qualification rounds, isn't it? Yes. And it's not hard right now because it's a, a brand new target, but once they get shooting a little bit and there's a couple of holes there, it might be a little bit more difficult to call some of those arrows. And also, when we're in qualification rounds, we don't have the <laughs> a judge every single end. It is, yes. It's the responsibility of the people on the bail, and generally we shoot four people per bail because this tournament's so packed. Sure. And so you got to have a, a good mix of people that are looking at it. Well, yeah, you need to have, have people there to keep keep them honest. See, this is the arrow you're talking about, too. This one is the one you were saying is going to be close, and that's where the judge had another look at it with a flashlight. Yes. So we await for the official score. Here's PJ. Last year was your first time. Is this, we primarily know you from the 3D game. Uh, do, have you shot indoor all these years, though? All of them really shot this indoors. So no 3Ds. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. What? Where do I see it? USATs. Nope. Not Indoor USATs. Nationals. Vegas. Indoor National. I'm so. mixing. You can tell it's eight o'clock in the morning. I'm see, mixing I'm, up. I'm a lot shorter than the other two. <laughs> the only I, no, I know your name. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tim, let's run through your equipment here. Yep. Tell everybody what you're shooting. Got the Elite Vertigo. Just got this a few months ago, and it has been a pleasure to shoot. Um, that shoot about shootability challenge is real. Yeah. So, um, otherwise, excels. Stabilizer, sight, um, AAE, rest, knocks. Um. And so Tim's going through his his awesome equipment there, and um, you know Tim was able to start shooting archery because he wanted to be competitive through college. And um, he's really kind of funny. Tim Tim's a real pleasure to shoot with, and he won indoor nationals in '99 and. 3D Nationals some time ago. But he is a very talented shooter from Sioux Falls, and uh, he really enjoys the sport. And it's very interesting, Eli, because you know you have a mix of talent in the Masters Open Pro category. You have people that were pros that transitioned into it because of age and because performance starts to drop off when you get into your late 40s, and you have other people that picked up the sport late and find that they have you know, a lot of acumen for shooting. So it's really, really cool class. Yeah, it is. I got a chance to meet Tim last year. He's a very kind guy. Yeah, super, super fun to just hang out with, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm being there in Sioux Falls, that's got to be great because the Yankton Archery Center is just not too far not away. Not too awful far down the road. It's so good. Yeah. If you're a professional archer, that's the place you want to live. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that NFA center up there is crazy. You can shoot 100 yards indoor. You have 3D targets out there, three field courses on property, another field course in town. Ooh, All the wind it. you could ever want. All the <laughs> exactly. So a little high for Bill Drake. That's a good shot. Eli, you know pressure. You know, you made the yeah. uh, USA Archery Top 8 last year to shoot for the finals. You're a world record holder. When we're looking at these archers shooting, let's talk about pressure. How do you handle the adrenaline rush when you're on a stage like this? The only thing that you can ever do is just continue what, what you've always practiced. Uh, it's easy to get up there and, and be scared, and, and that's completely normal. So just the thing is, is I try to get practice at home with leagues, stuff that's going to put you in a little bit of a pressure situation. Ten. And uh, that's all you can do. Just get enough experience up there to, to be able to do it. And this this place has some of the greatest pressure of anywhere. Oh, yeah. With the way the lighting is, PJ up there sticking a microphone in your face. It's tough. <laughs> First trip here, first time at the Classic as well. What made you decide to come out and shoot? Just to get as much experience as I can with all this, yeah. Gotcha. Uh, do you shoot a lot of indoors? Vegas, NFA, Indoor yeah. Nationals? Back those. in our area, I do, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Where are you from? I'm forgetting already. Oregon. Oh, Oregon. So this is a haul for you. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's run through your equipment, because uh, I like that jersey, Darton. We're going to talk about that in a second. All right, so I'm shooting the Darton Vegas. 
Excel Size, Shrewd Scope, uh, Conquest Bars, uh, B3 uh, Release, PS27 Arrows. All right, uh, great round. What I wanted to mention about with Darton is you're our first, I believe, Darton competitor this weekend that we're seeing up here. Folks our age, we're familiar with Darton, but it's great to see them back on the tournament scene since Randy Kitts took over. Darton, one of our great sponsors, and they're turning out some great compound bows again. So after two ends, Tim Arnold, 64, Bill Drake, 62. 64, 62, one point match for our first of our shoot ups here in the Masters Open Pro 50 plus category. So Bill Drake and Tim Otis trying to shoot up to shoot against our second place qualifier. Now there were two qualifiers, two qualifying sessions in essence. And basically what you have here at the Lancaster Archery Classic is a 60 round, 60 arrow round and the total point value was 660, but then you went into eliminations. And Eli, this is where this tournament's kind of unique, I think, because in your eliminations, how you shot, every point you scored made a difference in your total points accumulated. Yes. So for instance, Rob Morgan, who was our first place qualifier on points after the first day, after eliminations, he actually slid to second behind Tim Gillingham. And that was just because the total points that this class shot available was 924 and Bill Drake shot 900 total points, Tim Otis 902, Rob Morgan 906 to 907. Well, yeah. At the upper levels of all of these classes, everybody is so close. And it makes sense that it, it switch very easily. Yeah, yeah, and that's a cool thing. Not only do you have to make sure you win your matches, yeah. but you, you can't win a match where you have one super low scoring like you can in other series that you and I have both competed in. Like a USA Archer, you could have one where, okay, you shoot maybe a 144 out of a 150, but the person shot a 143. It doesn't matter. Here, it matters. Yes. 11, 33. Well, it's nice. That everything you do here makes a lot of sense. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's important. Yeah. yeah. Um, once you get to eliminations, it he matters. Uh, wow, great shooting by That's the boys. Excellent shot. Yeah. You can continue to. Okay. Once you once you get through eliminations, your your qualifications does matter mm -hmm. because it, it decides where where you get placed here. And that's not the case with all of them. Not the case with all of them. All right, so you can see right now unofficially there's a two point spread, 95 for Bill Drake, 97 for Otis, and this is the level that we expect to see. 30 only two points drop so far for for Otis as he's trying to advance to shoot off against second place. Now keep in mind that we still have that 12 ring in play. As you can see on the target, there's that small dot. Now the risk is, of course, that sits right there on that 8-7 line. So if you miss it, you could shoot an 8 or a 7 if you're really close to it. But that's the risk reward for the 12. But right now you can see that these archers are, uh, that it looks like, Bill Drake is having a conversation with his coach, Joel Turner from Shot IQ, and they might be going over the 12 strategy. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets if he hits that here. Yeah, you think first one, straight away, or I don't know. I don't know. I'm almost thinking, Eli. Maybe it would be better just to see how these first two arrows play out. Maybe if Tim gives you a point back or whatever. Well, it's still very close right now. So yeah, yeah. I mean the thing is like with the 12. If you if you call the 12 and you're not feeling it, you can still the point the regular points matter. You yes. know what I mean? It's not like you eliminated the 11 ring or anything. Final end of the shoot up. 10. Okay, so Give there's him a little a, bit of space. Mm -hmm, yeah, opportunity for a point. 11 10 line. Yes, we'll see. That's going to make his decision even harder. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> we just heard PJ reminding everybody he's trying to sell 12 buttons. Yep. So that could put them to, to even depending on the, the call of that first arrow, but I, I think that. Tim just called to 12. Oh. So he's he's trying to put the pressure. He 
You must feel confident that he's hitting this. Oh, oh that's low. And see, that is, let's see what happens here. But we'll talk about that more from an archer's brain perspective. Yeah. Oh, Great shot, easy. an excellent shot. Great Good right. comeback, Bill Drake. Oh. One of the one of the great type things about the eleven is if you have a, a somewhat large dot, it completely covers it. Yeah, that's uh, the I, thing. I'm not sure what type of dot. Well, you know, when I shoot, right? That dot covers the entire yellow. So to find the twelve ring down there, I can't find it. I've just got to guess where it is. Got to aim in the middle of the Yeah, exactly. But the other thing too, Eli, how many, how much practice? do you have when you're practicing of just shooting in the middle of the target? Like your whole life is about shooting in the Forever. middle. Forever, yes. Now all of a sudden we're telling you, you gotta dip down and you gotta shoot. Aim four inches low. That's, yeah. And we've seen a lot of people shoot low because of that, because the brain's going, I don't wanna be down here. This isn't where, no. we're, this isn't where we've trained to be. That's also part of the challenging thing about shooting that 12 ring. But you're right, your reticle's gonna make a big difference. It's tough. You're a 3D shooter, you're shooting a really small fiber, you might be able to see mm -hmm. it. or. You know, you have a vinyl dot on your lens, a teeny tiny, tiny, tiny one. The like, teeny tiny one. Like field or something. <laughs> so let's go back to PJ. Bill Drake, 128, Tim Audis, 124. All right, our number two qualifier from Billings, Montana, Rob Morgan. So in walks Rob Morgan, who was one of our top qualifiers. After our first 60 arrow qualification rounds and then through eliminations, ended up second, just one point back. So guaranteed podium yes. for both of these archers right now. But whoever wins this match has got to go up against a behemoth in Tim Gillingham. But when we get to Tim, we'll talk about Tim and his woes in indoor archery. Yes. Because he definitely has them. But let's focus on this match. Yes. As we have 12 arrows to go to decide, possibly 13. He looks a little shaky. Yeah. I'd say one of the, the toughest arrows, the first one, once you, once you get up there. Yeah, and and that's really the big question. When you're shooting something like Vegas, when you're you, especially someone like you in the category you shoot, and you're trying to shoot a 900, yeah. I was going to ask you, what's what's more difficult, the first arrow or the last arrow of 90? Well, by the time I get to the last arrow, I've already dropped one. So, uh, <laughs> you yeah, know, so far. Yeah, you got next week. Yeah. yeah, I got next week. Great shot by Rob. Just joining us. We are in our second shoot up here at the 2023 Lancaster Archery Classic in Mannheim, Pennsylvania. We have Rob Morgan shooting off against Bill Drake. This is to advance and secure the number two spot and go to number one. They're shooting 20 yards downrange at a 40 centimeter target face. Rob Morgan from Billings, Montana owns an archery shop there and of course is the father of famed Senior archer, I guess, USA archery. Tate Morgan. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, Rob, yeah. Rob's Tate's dad. Oh, that's so me. The fiance of Paige, Paige Pierce. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, let's let's uh, let's hear from PJ. Let's learn a little bit more Rob about Morgan, this, Mr. Welcome Morgan. Welcome to the Lancaster Archery Classic Finals stage. Have you been up here before? Nope, first time. First time. First You've time. shot the Classic before? Yes. Uh, how many years do you think? Um, shot it three times, four times? Three, four times. Yep. All right, now we're going to ask you about your equipment, but first, I believe I remember seeing a picture of you with a giant elk or deer this year. Yeah. 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 We elk. did good. We did elk, I'm yes. jealous. Yep. You and Tate coming from Montana, you have lots of cool stuff to hunt there. Yep. We'll talk about that later. Okay. Let's talk about your equipment first here. Okay. I'm um, shooting the Hoyt Stratus 36. Uh, True ball XL on the site, on the scope. Stabilizers are uh, Conquest 625s, Freak Show, AAE, gas strings. Uh, arrows are Black Eagle PS 27s. Another ETAC light there. ETAC light, yep. yep. Uh, and release, did we get your release? Release, yep, shooting the executive. Executive, gotcha. Yep. All right, well, congratulations on making it to the stage. 
After our first end, we are tied up at 32. And talking and shooting with Rob Morgan, you know, he took some time off, quite a bit of time off from competitive archery and then just decided, I think it was last year, to just kind of come back and, and just enjoy it and spend some time with Tate, who, you know, is with his fiance Paige out yes. in California and, and doesn't spend as much time as he used to at home in Montana. And he just came bursting on the scene and he is an absolutely talented shooter. For being back yeah. two years. Yeah. It's a big deal to be back up here. Mm-hmm. Now obviously you, you always want to shoot as high as you can, but I would say that Bill has a little bit of an advantage yeah. coming in here already having shot a match. He he's kinda got his nerves down a little bit. Yeah. And that can definitely do it. Especially on these uh these finals with four people. With eight yeah. people if you're the eighth shooter and you keep shooting your way up, think about how many arrows you're shooting by the time you went yes. up into first place. And that's what we saw a couple of times so far at the Lancaster Archery Classic in years past. Uh, Nick Gappers last year started at the very bottom. That's right. Way to first. Or, yep. Tim Hanley, the CEO. He, yes. He marched up. Junior Sizemore did it a couple of years ago as well in the amateur class and made his way to second. He didn't win it, but he was... The poor guy's a 3D shooter. Normally shoots 20 to 40 arrows a day when he's practicing and had to shoot a couple hundred almost here. The guy was exhausted. It's hard work. Yeah. So think about it. When you come to Lancaster Archery Classic, don't just practice for 60 arrows. Mm -hmm. Practice for being eighth place in the in the shoot up. And just being up there will wear you out too. All yeah, it's just all the nerves yes. under the light, the crowd. All right, so that one. Again, we talk about scoring for people that are new to archery, and you can see that that arrow is just touching that 10 line. Yes. So what value are they getting? Uh, if it's touching, it's in. So if it touches anything of that black line at the edge of the arrow, and it's where it rests. Keep in mind, folks, it's not the hole that, that's made in the paper. It's actually where the arrow's at rest. In this format, you get scored the higher value points. Yes. So even though the arrow looks like it's completely resting in the nine ring, a little contact will get it done. Yes, and even if the, the line there is pushed in a little bit, if you recreate where the line should go and it touches the arrow, then you get the higher value. And that's really where the judge comes in. That's what they're trained to do. You gotta recreate that line in your brain. All right, halfway through the shoot up. Bill Drake, who was our fourth place qualifier, sat Tim Otis, and now he's going up against Rob Morgan. Whoever wins this gets to shoot against our number one qualified shooter after qualifications and elimination rounds with cumulative score for every arrow shot, total point value. Out of 924 points that were available during the entire weekend here at the Lancaster Archery Classic for the Masters Open Pro category, Rob Morgan was able to grab 906 points. Yeah. Good shot. All tied up now. Ten. Ooh, he barely got yeah. that ten line. Eleven. needs an 11 here to keep it tied. 10. Bill Drake with an opportunity to go up two points. There's 30 seconds on the shot clock for, for each arrow. So compound archers generally have quite a bit of time, depending on your shot cycle. It's still tough, though. 11. Oh, a great shot. Yeah. You don't have a chance to let down. Once you commit, you got to do it. We did see on the recurve side of things, it's a little bit yes. easier for them That's true. occasionally, you know, but on the compound side, it's depending on your shot cycle, it's a struggle. Definitely last night when we were watching Barebo, some of the string walkers, they would take the first 11 seconds of that, or 12 seconds of that 30 seconds. But it's like, once you get that Barebo back, it's like gone. It's good to go. <laughs> yeah. I believe Steve Anderson let down one year and still shot. And still shot. Yeah. Yeah. Is he giving you some good advice up here? For the final. Yeah, trying to, you know, trying to tell me to shoot him in the middle. <laughs> gotcha. All right, Rob. After three He's ends. talking about Tate in, his, in the coaching box. His son Tate's back there in the coaching box. And look, you know, 
The thing is, is that archery isn't all, you know, butterflies and rainbows all the time. Mm -mm. Sometimes archers struggle through something called target panic that shows up completely differently for each archer. But basically it's like something that happens during the shot, before the shot, and you have to struggle through it. And there's mechanical fixes for it, there's mental fixes for it, and you know, that's where in Bill Drake's coaching box you have shot IQ, and that's the mental game of it all. Tate Morgan, who's an unbelievable shooter, who's in Rob's coaching box, is going through a bit of that right now, as a lot of people do during the, the ebbs and flows of archery. Well, and if it's gonna show up anywhere, it's gonna show up right here. Oh, whenever yeah. you're in the most most pressure. Oh yeah, no question about it. It is so strange how that happens, isn't it? When it is. you just get a little bit of pressure, you, and you, you try to go to the local tournaments, right? You try to do something to replicate the pressure, but it's just never quite exactly there. There's no way to replicate this, mm -hmm. not unless you're here. All right, another one outside for Rob. Eleven. Yeah, I think, uh, well, call. okay, so Rob Morgan's called to 12. Nine. A little high. A little high. Better than going the other way. Yeah, 100%. This for the win for fourth place Bill Drake to work his way up to shoot for the number one spot. Ten. And that's good enough. Good enough, yep. Open Pro class with a of $1,250. $1, bucks. Congratulations, Rob. Not bad. Not bad. His first all. time on stage, and he'll obviously put that one in the bank and learn from that. It's a lot better than not having <laughs> that kind of money. Oh, yeah. Yes. So now arrows will get pulled after they've been scored, and we get the official, and targets get changed, and name placards get changed. And now we're coming down to the final of the Masters right, Open Pro 50. Here's PJ. Our number one qualifier. He needs no introduction, but we'll give him one anyway. From Provo, Utah, two-time classic champion, current defending champion, Tim Gillingham. <laughs> I, what can you say about Tim Gillingham? I mean, this guy has been in every situation. He's two-time champ here. He's multiple time champ in a bunch of classes. ASA Shooter of the Year. Uh, <laughs> USA Archery Champion. I mean, this guy can just flat out shoot. He can. But when you talk to him about this game, the game of archery, this is the one area where he has the least amount of confidence, but yet he finds himself in the number one spot. And Tim, in Tim's style, he had the choice to shoot first or second, and he chooses first. Just a little low, see if he grabs a click or two. And this, for a lot of people, is their first look to see what rig Tim Gillingham is going to shoot this year. It's changed a lot. Got the lasers oh, 30 inch bars on the back. <laughs> Heard it referred to as the walker. Yeah, the walker. Yeah. But look, he's got a brace on the front. Yeah. That's a little different. Still. We're talking about a stabilizer setup. The one thing I can tell you about Tim Gillingham is, is it doesn't matter what it looks like. If it works for him, he's going to use it. And it's legal. Yeah. But Bill Drake... Yeah. in his third match, and he is really in a groove right now. Look at the size of that monster. Ten. So, see if Bill can 33 it out. I didn't like Just that. A little low. Um, can't wait to hear this interview with Tim Gillingham on what he's got going on.
All right, Tim, welcome back to the Lancaster Archery Classic final stage. How's it feel? Oh, not too bad. It's a little early. A little early. <laughs> Extra early if you're from Utah, correct? Correct. <laughs> Tim, run through your setup for you. I've, if you could keep it to under 20 minutes, we'd appreciate it. Well, I'm running this new Bowtech Reckoning Gen 2 uh, 39, kind of a work of art, really. And, it is. Uh, black gold uh, sight, shrewd scope with a seven power uh, feather vision lens. I got quad B Stinger Premier Plus bars, shooting a true ball, execute release, triple X arrows, Q2I veins. All right, unique as always is Tim Gillingham set up. Welcome back to the stage there. If you didn't know it, Tim is in the business of selling stabilizers. <laughs> <laughs> sure is. And as tall as he is and as big as he is, he is the poster child. All right, Eli, he's shooting, he mentioned a seven power lens. Let's talk about lenses. Yeah. Like what, what does that even mean? Well, obviously it's all preference. But whenever you have a, a higher power lens, you see a smaller portion of the target, and it looks like it's moving faster yeah. because, because you're just seeing a smaller portion. So I personally prefer something like a four power. So I put the dot in the middle and just let it float. But for somebody who, who wants to see it really well and they can hold very yeah. well, uh, a seven power lens, it works for them. It's crazy. I think the largest we've seen, eight power maybe? That's, a, that's kind of the most magnification yeah. that I think, I think I've heard of. I have heard of a 12 before, oh but I don't know I anybody that shoots that. You want to talk about how shaky that would be? So just imagine, I mean, you know, if, if you're watching this right now and you think about it, take out your phone, you know, just point it at the TV. Now go ahead and just keep zooming in and we'll look how much you shake. Yes. Right? In, in the screen. And you go four power, I go four power, Tim's at seven power. Well, it's very difficult to to be calm and, and make 11, a clean shot 18. and not get too careful whenever your dot is moving around like crazy, mm -hmm. but Tim can do it. Of course, that's part of why he's got four stabilizers yeah. and most of us have two. I am curious though to know how much total mass weight his bow is. Mine comes in at about 10 pounds. 11, okay. 18. Total. Tim's has gotta be like 15. Heavyweight battle going on right now. They're going toe to toe. Pair of 33s between them. Bill, seems like you found your groove up there. Feeling comfortable? Let's go to PJ. How do you ever feel comfortable up here, right? <laughs> <laughs> How would you describe that to folks who have not been on this stage, what it's like, and you're, but yet you're still able to do what you need to do? It is just do your job. Execute Repetition. your shot. Yeah, and uh, hopefully you can hold off the nerves. <laughs> they were there. It's getting better now, though. All right, well, you seem to be doing it very well. We have a one-point lead here at the halfway point for Bill Drake at 65, Tim Gillingham, 64. And Eli Hughes, that's what you were talking about. It's like when you get those nerves, you just got to remember your shot process. And, yeah. and, and that shot process starts with timing as well. You know, and people can get out of rhythm and they can rush shots and then they miss shots. So it's important. We saw that in Barebow last night. You know, where the winner there, he just kept taking his time and using the clock to his advantage. All right, here we go. And while you're on the subject of that, I, I've, I've gotten a chance to speak with, with Joel, um, yeah. who's in, in the coaching box right now. And, and what he's saying in, in part of his Shot IQ program mm -hmm. is that our job is to, to execute our shot, not to hit the middle. Yeah. And that really, if you think about it, is part of why people shoot the hinge, right? It's the surprise. It's like, let yes. the subconscious do the job, let it aim in the middle, and then be surprised. That way, you're not affecting yeah. the shot. Well, Tim didn't, <laughs> wasn't a big fan. We saw a little, little bit of Gillingham English there. Make no mistake, if these shooters keep shooting these 11s by the time we get to the yeah. last arrow, Tim Gillingham's gonna punch that 12. He is a risk taker. If you've ever seen him shoot ASA, he will shoot at the 14 in the rain on the largest, largest target. Yeah, like that. Yeah. It's gonna be close. Yeah. Guarantee he's gonna go for that 12. And with a seven power lens, he's gonna get the biggest 12 view of any punch. Yes. That's 
close call. On Looks that like Bill's got three there. Yeah. I believe all three of them just got it, but. All right, so I'll wait for the official scoring. But Tim Gillingham sure mentioned his uh, his new equipment. That's the Bowtech Gen 2. And the, the thing about that particular bow, the Reckoning Gen 2, is that Tim Gillingham and Paige Pierce both had a huge influence with the engineers at Bowtech to create this newer version of that bow. And you, we were talking about it before. Everybody I know who shot the bow is, is absolutely raving about it right now and so what's cool about being that pro shooter is that sometimes right the factories the hoyts the botex the, the elites you know and on and on and on they're going to listen to their pro shooters it's part of the reason why they have them on staff help them develop the next generation of bow so when you get that in your hands everybody can shoot those things well and tim was a great guy a great resource He's known for the guy who tinkers and, and messes around with stuff. <laughs> As you can see, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he tinkers. He does. I mean, you, sometimes you look at his equipment and you're like, how did you? He's like, Dremel, drill, <laughs> saw, chop saw. Whatever works. Whatever works, man. That's how I get it. There we go. He goes straight, straight after it. Oh, wait. It works. It's not on now. There we go. There we so go. he's going for it. All right. Hold your breath. Gillingham is doing Gillingham things. I think we've only seen 112 so far this weekend and probably about 15 shot at. I bet we'll see a lot more as the day goes on. Oh, there's the flinch. Shake. Another one. Oh, it's just, just high. high. Yep. Yeah. Bill Drake has to do now is just keep doing what he's been doing. And he's going to be Masters Open Pro Lancaster Archer. He's got Classic some excellent channel. groups up there. Yeah, he sure does. Yeah. So now the any pressure off, this is where Tim shines. But yeah. Drake is handling this pressure like an absolute veteran. I think he'd been up here 10 times before. I think. Yeah. Just had a glance at the clock. Knows how much time is left. Taking his time. 10. That's all he needed. That's it. Officially, we're going to have a 130 to 126. Bill Drake shooting his way up from fourth place to the win. Incredible. Bill Drake, Tim, as our second place finisher, you will take home $2,000 plus $1,000 contingency from Botech, Tim Gillingham. And our 2023 Masters Open Pro Champion, Bill Drake taking home $4,000 plus a contingency of $7,500 from Darton, your champion, Bill Drake. How's that sound to you? <laughs> that sounds pretty good. <laughs> so, uh, Bill, one of the things that we do is put all our champions on that banner, so next year you're going to be up there. You have to look at yourself when you're standing here again. Do we have to? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, is this, where does this win rank for you in your shooting career? Uh, it's up there for sure, yeah. It's, uh, I just come here to shoot the best I could, and results will be what they are, and they've turned out pretty good this year. So. Based on your practicing that you've been doing, your work <laughs> up to this point, and had you imagined this? Uh, absolutely not. Practice was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but somehow you made it work. I did, yeah. All right, Bill. Well, congratulations. You're our 2023 Masters Open Pro champ. Thank you.
Well, I think the trip all the way to Lancaster County from Oregon paid off for Bill Drake. And, hey, just another example, Eli, don't let practice, you know, determine whether you're going to shoot or not. Even if you're not shooting great in practice, still come out and compete. You never yes. know what's going to happen. So there you go. That's Masters Open Pro. And Bill Drake is your champion of the 2023 Lancaster Archery Classic here from the Spooky Nook Sports Complex in Mannheim, Pennsylvania. More shoot-up finals right around the corner.